Hello students, this is Dr. A. S. Ayer. I welcome you all for the course on Finite Element Method in Civil Engineering. Our today's topic is what is shape functions or interpolation functions in Finite Element Method. So shape functions or interpolation functions are used to represent the variation of displacements in Finite Element Method. Right. In FEM analysis, we know that very first step after discretization and selecting the type of elements, we have to assume the approximate variation of displacement with the help of using polynomial. Right. Since the true variation of displacements are not known to us, and that's why we are assuming the variation of displacement and that variation of displacement is normally written with the help of Pascal triangle that already we had discussed in the previous lectures that how to use the Pascal triangle to write down the displacement function of a finite element. But once you write down the displacement variation using Pascal triangle For example, if you remember, if it is a bar element, two noted bar element, its displacement polynomial is u equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2x. Or if it is a constant strain triangular element, its displacement function is alpha 1 plus alpha 2x plus alpha 3y. This is what the variation of displacement, which is approximate since the true variation is not known to us. But in finite element formulation, mathematically you have to solve this displacement function. Sometimes you have to find out the inverse of the matrix, right? So sometimes in higher engineering mathematics, analytical solution of some problems is either not known or difficult to find out. Sometimes the inverse of matrix representing this displacement polynomial are either not known or difficult to find out. In such cases, we are replacing this displacement polynomial function by another function which is easy to solve mathematically. Those functions are called as shape functions or interpolation functions. I repeat again, in finite element analysis, when you write down the displacement model or displacement function which represent the variation of displacement within the element, right? This normally we are writing with the help of Pascal triangle. These are few examples. This is example of bar element, a displacement variation of bar element and this is displacement variation of CST element. These displacement variations are approximate because true variation of displacement is not known to us. But in higher engineering mathematics, sometimes solution of these displacement functions are either difficult or not known to us and that's why these displacement functions are replaced by another function which is easy to solve mathematically and those functions are called as shear functions right so for example when you write down the displacement variation using pascal triangle your two noted bar element displacement variation will be like this u equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2x but when you write down the displacement function by using shape function, this u is equal to n1 u1 plus n2 u2, where n1 n2 are the shape functions and u1 u2 are the displacements of node number 1 and node number 2. Similarly, if you want to write down displacement polynomial function for a CST element, u is equal to like this, alpha 1 plus alpha 2x plus alpha 3y. But if you want to write down this displacement function with the help of shape function, then it will be equal to n1u1 plus n2u2 plus n3u3. 
where n1 into n3 are shear functions of CST element and u1, u2, u3 are the displacements of x directional displacements of three nodes of CST element. So this n1, n2 are called as shear functions or interpolation function. Okay. Now if you see few example, if it is two noded bar element, if you write down the displacement polynomial using Pascal triangle, it will be like this. And if you want to write down this displacement polynomial using shape function, it will be like this. Okay. This is using Cartesian coordinates and this is using shape functions. Right. This is from the Pascal triangle. Similarly, if it is a CST element from Pascal triangle in terms of generalized coordinates alpha 1, alpha 2, 2 alpha 3, your displacement function will be like this. But if the same, if you want to write down in terms of shape function, that u is will be equal to like this. Okay. Same you can write down for four noted rectangular element also. This is from the Pascal triangle in terms of generalized coordinates alpha 1 to alpha 4. And this is in terms of shape function n1, n2, n3, n4. Right. If you look at these three examples, one thing you will understand from this. That is, in bar element number of shape functions are 2, n1, n2, because number of nodes are 2, right? In CST element, number of shape functions will be 3, because number of nodes will be 3. Similarly, in rectangular element, the number of shape functions will be 4, because number of nodes are 4. So it means, we can come to know one important property of shape function is that number of shape functions are equal to number of nodes. Of course, this is not true in all elements because except bending elements, this is applicable to all element except bending elements. Okay, we will see that bending elements also. Now some of the important properties of shape functions. First one, the magnitude of shape function at each node is always equal to unity. It means, if you consider one example of bar element having two nodes, so node number 1 and 2, so n1 represent the shape function at node number 1, n2 shape function at node number 2, so value of n1 is always equal to 1 at node number 1 and n2 is equal to 1 at node number 2. It means n2 is equal to 0 at node number 1 and n1 is equal to 0 at node number 2. Please understand this. It means the magnitude of shape function at each node is always equal to unity. Okay. This is first property of shape function. Second property of shape function is number of shape functions are equal to number of nodes just we had seen in the last slide except bending elements. So only in case of bending element this property is not true but in other elements two dimensional or one dimensional elements this is the number of shape functions are always equal to number of nodes. For example, for two noded bar element, number of shape functions will be 2. For three noded CST element, shape functions will be 3. For six noded LST element, shape functions will be 6. For four noded rectangular element, shape functions will be 4. Okay. But only in case of bending element, this is different. For example, if you consider one beam element, okay, if you consider this is one beam element, right? having node i here and node j, right, two nodes. If it is beam element, it is subjected to the perpendicular load or transverse load and beam will bend like this. And that's why it is called as bending element. So when it is bent, there are two degrees of freedom per node and that is vertical translation and rotation. Similarly at second node, vertical translation and noted rotation, right. So there are four degrees of freedom, right? So if you use that logic that number of nodes in beam element are two and degrees of freedom are four, 
right du f is equal to 4 actually and number of nodes will be 2 so in this bending element number of shape functions are equal to total degrees of freedom in the beam element or bending element total du f so in beam element shape functions will be equal to 4 n1 n2 n3 and n4 right so in beam bending element total number of shape functions are 4 because total degrees of freedom are 4 so in bending element number of shape functions are equal to degrees of freedom and in other element you can simply say that number of shape functions are equal to number of nodes okay of course in these four shape functions in bending element also n1 n3 are related to the translation and n2 n4 are related to the rotations right third property of shape function is the sum of shape function is always equal to unity of course this is also except bending element the sum of shape functions is always equal to unity for example if you are writing for bar element there are two shape functions n1 n2 for two nodes so this n1 n2 n1 plus n2 is always equal to 1 if it is cst element n1 plus n2 plus n3 is always equal to 1 it means sum of shape function is always equal to 1 this is one of the important property of shape functions right for example if you see this two noted bar element number of shape functions will be 2 n1 n2 the first according to the first property n1 is equal to 1 at node number 1 and n2 equal to 1 at node number 2 and according to the third property n1 plus n2 is equal to 1 similarly in second element it is cst element number of shape functions will be 3 n1 equal to 1 at node number 1 n2 equal to 1 at node number 2 and n3 equal to 1 at node number 3 and sum of three shape functions will be equal to 1 and similarly for rectangular element there are four shape functions addition of all four shape function is equal to 1 so only in case of bending element this n1 plus if you are taking example of beam element as we have discussed there are four shape functions in beam bending element but n1 n3 first and third representing translation and n2 n4 represent rotation so this property for beam bending element will be n1 plus n3 is equal to 1 and n2 plus n4 is equal to 1 so two times we have to write down for only bending element please understand okay so these are the shape functions and the last one what are the different methods for deriving the shape functions okay shape functions you can derive by using three different methods first one is shape function using polynomials in Cartesian coordinate system that is x y right second shape functions using polynomial in a natural coordinate system that is xi and eta system and third one shape functions using Lagrange's interpolation function in natural coordinate so this is also in xi eta coordinate system but it is using Lagrange's interpolation function so this is empirical formula developed by Lagrange's to find out the shape functions okay so in the next class we will see one by one what is the derivation of shape functions for the various element using these three different approaches right I hope all of you have understand what is shape function or interpolation function okay thank you thank you very much